Hi, I'm Dave Ingebretson. Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. You know, Leroy, a fly that's popular in almost every part of the country in the natural version is the one we call the Pale Morning Dun. PMD. A PMD, and it's in different, the natural is, occurs in different sizes in different mm -hmm. parts of the country, all the way from tiny ones, maybe 16 or 18, up to maybe 14. Or, or smaller, or I think I've so seen smaller Probably even too. smaller. Yeah. But it's a pattern that I think most serious trout fishermen need to have in their box in several different versions. Mm -hmm. uh, not only the dry fly, we're going to tie all several, we're going to try three tonight. We're going to tie the standard dry fly version, mm -hmm. then we'll tie a nymph version, but a little bit differently. It'll be a floating nymph, right. and then we'll tie a crippled dun or an emerger pattern. Mm -hmm. And each one has its place in a fly tire. In the insect's life. Oh, absolutely. You but bet. you don't know what the trout's going to be feeding on, right. and you have to be so prepared have for all, all three. Yes. So have them all. We'll right. tie them all for you tonight. What are you going to use to tie the dry fly version? Okay, we'll use all ginger hackle. Now, these are definitely different colors. Uh, the pattern will call for a real light ginger, like this one, for the tail. Uh, the wing tips, it's a hackle tip wing. We'll use a little bit darker ginger. For the hackle, we'll use the old uh, standard saddle hackle. I'll use a dubbing. We're going to use a real pale dubbing this time through. And the thread that I'll use again is a pale yellow. It's a dry fly ADOT thread. I want to put a size 14 in the vise. Uh, I've pinched the barb down on it. You know, we might suggest to people uh, a number of several manufacturers are starting to make very nice barbless hooks. Yes, they are. And, more uh, and more I, I am now buying my hooks barbless. Oh, I'm debarbing mine yeah. still. I have quite a supply that I can do yeah, that. Yeah, I do on the old hooks, but yeah. I, now I've, the new ones I'm getting, I'm getting barbless whenever possible. Okay. Now I'm going to dress the, the hook like we always do. And then I'm going to come back up and tie on the hackle tip wings. Now I like to have these wings about a third of the way back from the eye of the hook. And I'll tell you, you and I were talking about this before the camera went on. Hackle tip wings are really getting hard to come by anymore hard with to the make new hackle. Because the new hackle is so yes. narrow and so pointy. Absolutely. And you know, I might tell people to do what I do. I if you can find them, I look for the old, the inexpensive imported the, the uh, old tape Chinese because hackle, they, they yeah. well, India or Chinese yeah. that have the rounded uh, Chips. points mm -hmm. and I get them just in what I need for tying hackle you point bet. wings. Well, we'll, uh, we'll make these do tonight. Now, I've put these two hackle uh, shiny side to shiny side so that when I tie them on the, on the hook, they will flare apart naturally. And as you said, about a third of the way back from the eye of the right. hook, that leaves you plenty of room mm -hmm. for the hackle in the head. And I want that, the hackle to be about the, the same length as the shank of the hook. Now, I'll stand those points up, the, ha the wings up, We'll let some of that fall down. Now say that again. You want the wings to be about as long as the as shank the of the shank hook. the shank of the hook, right. correct. My, um, my idea always is, and, and this is, comes to, uh, into play when you select the hackle too, is I like the wings to stand up a fourth to a third taller than the hackle. Mm -hmm. And we know that mm -hmm. the hackle should be about one and a half times the gap of the, the hook. The gap, right. And it's, it's really important to tie your dry flies to the proper proportions. Right. Now what I've done is I've actually moved those wings back and just kind of wrapped over them loosely and I'm going to trim some of this hackle there that we don't need. Now you can see those two little hackle tip wings stand back up again. I'll go ahead and trim this off, the butts, and I'm going to leave those just like they are for now. I'll straighten them up when we get back to that point. Now I'm going to take a, a pale hackle here and we'll just use a few fibers of it for the tailing. And we might remind people of what we've said before, that if you're taking your hackle from a cape to get tailing material, mm -hmm. look for the spade hackles mm -hmm. along the edges of the On cape. On each side. Because those right. fibers are going to be longer and stiffer. That's correct. And they make great tailing material. Now what I've done, I have just a, one of these hackles. I'll pull a few fibers off of either side just to give me a few more uh, hackle t that I can well, tie that's in. that's interesting. You pull them off either side. I do. Huh. I just grab a bunch on the one side well, and strip them off. Then that and way I can use that down the feather. tail for more. Oh, more, I do too, uh, but the next time I just take them off the other side of the stem. Off the other side, all right. <laughs> now I'll make this, this tail the, as long as the shank of the hook. Mm -hmm. Measure it out, change hands, soft loop, 
tie it down, pinch and tie. I'll go ahead and trim that off. So I can get that one. I think what you did there is important to, to say again because this is what I refer to as the basic grip for, oh, the for binding anything onto the hook and keeping it in sure. place on the hook is you hold it in your fingertips and then you open your fingertips, make a loose loop over the material, and then pinch. before you tighten it, you squeeze tight and pull straight down. Right. And right. then it's going to stay, and you do that yeah. every time you make your wines. Now I've taken just a little bit of this pale dubbing, and again, I don't use wax, I don't like to use it, and you don't want this real heavy. This has to be very sparse. You know, I used to feel the same way about wax, but I've lately started to use a new thread that's very lightly waxed, uh -huh. and I really like it. Well, this thread is lightly waxed, but I just, I mean, I just don't like to use the additional wax. Yeah, to don't go put on. any extra on it. No, no, no. But it used to be even the the threads that were pre waxed were so heavily oh, waxed that they heavy. clogged yes. up the bobbin and all. Yes. But the newer thread I've been using, I really like it, and it it is lightly coated, and uh, I certainly don't use any extra wax uh -huh. for most of my time. Now what I've done is I've run that body material up to the wing. Now I'm going to stand those wings up a little and wrap just in front of them. That will give us a stand up. I'll put my wing, my thread back behind the wing again. And now I've pulled a hackle off of that saddle. And I'll go ahead and just tie it in place. I'm going to lay that stem. As you recall, we always leave a little bit of stem sticking out there to get it started right. I'm going to put that stem right between those two hackle so tips. So what you mean is when you start winding, the first thing you wind is stem instead of hackle. bare stem. Right. And that sets it up in the plane property yes. so you don't get fiber sticking Absolutely. out at the wrong angle. Yeah. Now the hackle's tied in. I'm going to take three or four wraps behind the wing. I'm going to move those wings back, get my hackle in front. And we'll just get three or four more good wraps there. Bind that down. I'm going to clip that hackle off. Take my whip tool and put a little whip finish on it. And there's our pale morning done. Dry fly version. Uh, very nice, appreciative little fly. We have a, a medium ginger hackle tip wing. We have a light ginger, hackle fiber tail, a real pale cream dubbing, and a light ginger hackle. All right, we've tied the PMD dry. Now, as we said, you need a nymph version too. But I think the problem a lot of people have fishing nymphs is there are different levels in the water. Mm -hmm. And you have to have your fly at the proper level. And most of the time with nymphs, that's down on the bottom. Occasionally, it's in the middle layers if you've got nymphs coming up to emerge. But uh, this is a very special nymph. This is a floating nymph. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, this is one that's going to drift right in or under the surface film. Right in the film, yes. Uh, and it's supposed to represent that stage that, where the fly is just about to mm -hmm. emerge. Mm -hmm. The adult is just about to the emerge. The wing case is starting to swell. Starting to swell up. Yep. So what are you going to use to tie the PMD floating nymph? All right, we'll use a ginger hackle. This will be for the tail and leg material. The rib, I'm going to put on it a, just a slightly contrasting rib. This is just a regular tying thread. It's not really th as thick as I'd like, so I'll double it to make it show a little better. The body material will be tied with a, oh, a light green um, Antron dubbing. And we're going to have a ball on top, which is going to be cause that to float. And this is a gray Antron dubbing. And the thread I'll use is standard uh, dry fly thread. I have and a size. Tan color is it? It's yeah. tan in mm -hmm. color. Yeah, I have a, another size 14 hook. And you know, again, I'm doing this more one. and more of that, trying to match the fly color with the thread. With color. the thread, yes. Because I now know. we've got so many more threads available mm -hmm. than we used to have. Sure do. Used to be you could buy black thread, and that was and, it. Uh, well, black, pretty much it. <laughs> yellow, red, yeah. Yeah, but now there's every shade you need, and you it, it does a nice job to match the. Thread. All right, I'm going to dress the tying thread or the hook shank with the thread. Clip that off. And then I'll pull one of these hackle fibers out, or hackles out, and I'm going to take just a few fibers off of it to make the tailing material. I'll also save this to uh, 
make the legs when we get a little bit further up. Now with the nymph, I suppose you're using just a few fibers as opposed it's, to the what yeah, you it's on a fewer, dry fly. Yes, and I'm going to keep it just a little bit shorter yeah. than what I did before. Because of course it, the tail doesn't have to support no, the fly. No, although with this one it will definitely help as this is floating. Mm -hmm. All right, I've pulled that back through, gotten the length I want. I'll take this dubbing, or this ribbing I mean, and I'm just going to cut a section of that ribbing off, and then I'm going to double it. Now that's a trick I haven't done. Well, it'll uh, just give it a little yeah. bit heavier, yeah. uh, you know, more pronounced. You twist it at all? I'd, I'd will when I tie it on. Uh -huh. yes. When you wrap it? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I'll take some of this light green. Now you can match whatever color uh, the, the insect is hatching. This just happens to be a lighter green. Uh, they will come in a lot of different colors find that the shade of the insects will vary from one stream to the yes, other. It does. I suppose it's the environment, What's in the, the nutrients bottom. and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah. You bet. Then I'll wrap this, and I'm going backwards slightly, and then I'm going to lift my uh, ribbing material and take a couple of wraps behind it. That way I know that rib will stay right there where I want it to be. I'm going to come up about to the place where you would normally tie a wing if you were tying a dry fly. And I'm going to stop right there, get rid of that little bit of dubbing. Now I will twist this ribbing just a little bit. Now you're going to wrap that the same way you wrap everything I'm else wrap or counter it, wrap yes, it? Yes, no, I'm going to wrap this the same direction. Hmm. Now you can see that that is just a slightly contrasting color than what I had on there for the body material. I often counter wrap the ribs to keep it from disappearing into the right. dubbing. But as fine as that's dubbed, it really won't mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Now for one part of it, this that, well, no, I'm going to put some legs on it first. I'll get rid of that. Now here you do not want very many legs sticking out here at all. If you've got four or five on either side, that's really all you need. I'll come over here. I'll tie a section on the side opposite me. And I'll do the same. If I can pick that up. I'll do the same on my side. And try to get them the same length. Now that's what I call mustache hackle. Uh, if we have it hanging underneath, I call it a beard, call a beard or a throat. Sure. If I have it sticking out the side, I call sure. it mustache. <laughs> yeah. Now that and just a little long, I'll pull it back through. And then I'm going to clip that off. And that's a good idea. Don't clip it before you tie it in, but tie it in and then adjust and then the length. Adjust it. Yeah, whatever length you want. Right. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this gray dubbing, and again, it's an antron. And I'll put just a little bit on here. Now this is an unusual trick that well, we want viewers yeah, to pay attention bit. to. All right. Get a little bit of that stuck on there. And then what what's, what's your objective now? What are you going to, you're trying to form a ball to fit on top right. of the hook to now represent what, the I, uh, emergent mm -hmm, wings. Mm -hmm. I've just wrapped that dubbing on there. Now I'm going to just take my, my hand and push it down, get it all down in a little ball, and tie it down. Beautiful. And tie it down. Uh -huh. Now that stood up a little bit where I don't like it there. I'm going to take a counter wrap around it. I'm not going around the hook now, just around pull the it all ball together. itself and pull it all together. Now I got that little bit sticking up there. I'm going to just trim it off. And that little that antron like that will just make that oh, little yes. guy just float like crazy. Now right here in front, I want to take just a little bit more body material. Don't need very much at all. And just finish off there in front. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go a little bit at an angle to get down back underneath. Probably could have gone ahead and wrapped that on, but I'll go ahead and stop it. Build a small head. Now we should say, well, of course, this represents the PMD. Mm -hmm. This type of pattern would work for any floating nymph. Any floating so nymph. So any pattern you want, regardless of the colors or what the materials are, this mm -hmm. is a good technique to tie a close to the surface type you nymph. You bet. And there's a pale morning done, floating nymph. I've used the ginger hackle for the tail and legs. I've used a, a light green antron dubbing. And for the ball material or the floating section, I've used a gray antron dubbing.
All right, we've tied now the dry fly version of the pale morning done. Mm -hmm. We've tied a floating nymph stage, and now we're going to tie a special stage. It's called the CDC Crippled Done. Right. And it, this is different from any merger. This is supposed to represent the dun or the adult that got stuck crawling out of the, sh the nymphal case. He's trapped in it. He's trapped in the yes. case, and so now he's drifting down the water, mm -hmm. or she, as the case may be, mm -hmm. <laughs> drifting okay. down the water with the trailing shuck and something to represent the emergent wing and the adult trying to get out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think trout like this stage because he can't get away. Right. And they feed they on They don't it. have to chase it. They don't have to chase it. So what are we going to tie the CDC Crippled Cripple Done? Done. All right. Part of the tailing material will be a wood duck flank feather. I'll use two, two different shades of Zelon, a real light yellow and a, tan, a, a brown. Uh, this will represent the nymphal shuck that it's trapped mm -hmm. in. Uh, the body material will be a medium brown. The thorax will be a light yellow or tan. The wing case, or the wing in this case, will be a CDC feather or color canard, which mm -hmm. comes off of a duck. The uh, uh, thread, I will use a real pale yellow. For the hook, again, I'll use a size 14. It seemed like every fly we've tied this time has been on a 14. Well, we're representing the same insect. Yes. But again, we have to say that this can be tied down from 20 or 22 20, yes. up to 10 or 12, depending upon the specific Whatever's species. Whatever's hacking, now, you bet. Different species all masquerade as pale morning duns, depending on where you are. So you want to tie it in the proper size. Mm -hmm. All right, the hook's in the vise. I'll dress the hook shank. And then we'll take a small section of this uh, wood duck. Now, if you don't have wood duck, I'm sure any mallard flank would work. Just something to get that barred look. Well, what, what you do is you get dyed mallard flank sure that's can. gray that's dyed lemon yellow. Mm -hmm. And that's fairly commonly available. A lot of it you'll see anymore is it's not a real lemon yellow. It's almost a gold, but you gold, may have yeah. to sort and look through some yeah. of what you have. But you can buy it. It's basically an imitation wood duck. Correct. All right. Take a small section of that, tie it on. We'll get rid of some of that. Then we're going to take a piece of the yellow Zelon. Don't need a great deal of it. Now, for those that aren't familiar, you might tell them what Zelon is. Well, Zelon, Antron, sparkle it's a yarn. Yarns. It's a sparkly that's, type of yarn. That's all it is, yes. So you, you, it doesn't have to be Zelon, but no. it could be any of the sparkle yeah. yarns. Any of it. Now, the tan or the light yellow will go on first, and I want this very sparse. I got a little bit too much yeah, there. Remember now, you're trying to imitate a mostly empty case of mm -hmm. a nymph, mm -hmm. and this is, mm -hmm. this is, as you say, very sparse. Very sparse. Now, I'm going to tie this very small section of Antron, light colored yellow, on first. And what, that goes over wraps. the tail? Mm -hmm. Went over that wood duck tail. Mm -hmm. And you know what that... I want this Zelon to be a little bit shorter than the wood duck tail is. Then we're going to take some of the brown, again, very sparse. And, and this, this Zelon, sparkle yarn, whatever, Antron, it will actually help that fly float. It is a very mm -hmm. water resistant material. And again, this is a dun that, that's trapped in the case, so it mm -hmm. should be fished on or in right in the surface that's film. That's correct. That's where the natural is. Mm -hmm. And then so you oftentimes you would dress this with fl dry fly sure paste could. to keep it you up. Bet. Keep it going, yes. Now I'll take a, this light dubbing, tan dubbing that we have, or a medium dubbing, some people might call it. And we'll get a little bit of it on this thread. Got a ball of it there. I got a little bit too much. That's trouble almost everybody has with dubbing. You get too much material on and it ruins the whole fly. Yep. Now I don't know if that'll be enough, but we'll start wrapping it on there and see. I'm gonna go backwards a little bit just to cover up what little space I had right there and then come forward. You know, we keep saying this, but I can't say it enough that you need just a fuzzy thread to give you more control That's over right. the shape and the taper That's of right. the body. Now you can see that starting to to take a, uh, the body starting to take a tapered shape. And now I'm going to take one of these CDC feathers, or color canard, we call them CDC, rather. Yeah. Well, you know, called the canard, it's French, it means the tail of the duck. Mm -hmm. 
And these are feathers from the oil glands of the duck, the, the preening the glands, mm -hmm. that they keep their feathers oiled so they won't absorb water. Right. And it's important, you know, that a duck doesn't get sopping <laughs> wet. <laughs> and They're this is where it comes often. from. Now, these feathers theoretically are very buoyant, but the problem is if they have to dye it, then the dyeing process takes, takes out, out the oil, so right. then they re-oil them again. Mm -hmm. uh, at least some of the brands are, are re-oiled, and that's what you want to look sure. for. So and a natural would be better if you can get well, it. Well, but of course to get it in the different colors, you it has to be, it. Di be dyed that's and right. re-oiled. Now, yes. some people feel that the beauty of the Cul de Canard is not the flotation, or in addition to the flotation, is the little movement. Oh, these yes, very yes. fine filaments that because move. this is very very fine. Oh, you can see each little oh, yeah. fiber stick up there. But you know the natural insect moves, mm -hmm. and uh, so I know some tires that tie it not for the floatability, but because of this movement. movement. But it's probably a combination of both. Now what I'll do now is I'll take some of this lighter tan or creamy yellow uh, dubbing, and again, not very much. All I'm going to do is build a thorax here, and I want this thorax to be a little bit heavier, well, bigger around, is that the way you would say it, to represent that thorax. Mm -hmm. I might, before I forget it while we're on the topic of the floatability, if you're using CDC flies and you want them to float, do not put standard dry fly pa paste or grease on them, because it mats down the CDC. Oh, I didn't know that. And then you lose that movement and you use that, lose the filament, the structure of the CDC. Oh, really? So you don't want to put regular grease on them. I didn't know uh, that. You can buy oil, especially uh, for these things, uh -huh. for re-oiling them, or best of all, get the kind that's pre-oiled, and then if you do put anything on the fly, keep it away from the CDC. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. No, I'd never heard that Because that'll spoil before. it. Yeah. All right, and when you dry the fly, uh, squeeze it, yes. you know, in the yes. uh, amadou or uh, the artificial amadou. Squeeze mm -hmm. the moisture out and then don't re-oil it. You bet. Now what I've done, I've just put a small whip finish on the, on the head of the fly, clip it off, and you know, all the flies we've tied on this show so far, I have not put head cement on them. <laughs> Sometimes I don't take time well, to do right. it until you, I you get, get a lot You get used to that after you've tied a few flies. You get in the habit. Yeah, I do. And, uh, when I'm tying several, what I do is I'll tie them all and then go back and head cement oh, them all. Yeah, yeah I, that's yeah, the way I, I do I, it. I don't. Now there's the Pale Morning Dunn Cripple. Uh, it's, it's got the wood duck tail. It's got yellow and brown zelon. It's got color canard for the wing case, and it's got a light yellow uh, thorax. You know, Leroy, one thing uh, about that pattern is some patterns I've seen, they also put a little zelon in the wing. I've seen the same thing. Right here on either side of that color canard feather, they'll put just a real short little strip uh, or section of the yellow zelon. Uh -huh. uh, it gives a little rudder out there for well, maybe to help a little more flotation. Yeah. yeah, whether it's necessary or not, yeah. I don't know. Well, that's our show for tonight, and I think we've pointed out something that's fairly important, is that every natural insect exists in several different stages. And we've shown people how to tie flies for three of those stages, the mm -hmm. dun and the floating, floating nymph, nymph and a crippled done, mm -hmm. trapped in the case, trapped in the shot. but they'd also want to oftentimes have a deeply a, a nymph to be fished deep, sure. Sure. and probably heavily weighted. Mm -hmm. And this is true for almost any natural insect you're trying to match. Mm -hmm. And the observant angler will try to watch the, what we call the rise form to see the disturbance the fish makes and try to determine just where that fish is eating. Absolutely. Is it up on top of the film, in the film, just under the film, or down deep? Mm -hmm. And it makes a difference to what pattern you tie because the fish are feeding sure. on that specific thing. Depending on if it's a Depending slashing on, rise. Yeah. 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 Lots of so that's rise. it for tonight, and we thank you for watching, and you tune in again next week, and uh, we'll see you then. Dave and Leroy have produced two 90-minute videos covering new and exciting tips on how to make your fly tying better and more effective. They introduce you to everything you need as a beginner and demonstrate helpful techniques for intermediate tires. Fly Tying Techniques Volumes 1 and 2 are available by calling 1-800-883-0124. Cost of each video is $28.95 plus shipping and handling, or get the two-volume set for just $52.95. 
You can also order the programs in this series. Each 90-minute videotape includes three programs for just $22.95, plus shipping and handling. To order Fly Time, the Angler's Art Videos and Techniques tapes, call 1-800-883-0124. Thank you.